In this tutorial, we're going to try and have a look at one of the numeric topics for your exam. It's called Decision Trees. It's part of our decision making series of topics. Now, before we get going on the maths of this, uh, let's just start by explaining what decision trees are all about. Okay, so we've been learning about managers, uh, the role of managers, the kind of functions that they fulfill. One of those, one of the key ones, is decision making. And when managers are making decisions, so the theory goes, there are three different uh, elements that they might draw on when making their decisions. So the first of these is to make decisions based on hunches, on gut instincts, which perhaps sounds um, a little bit risky. It's a very common way for, for managers to make decisions. They go with what feels like the best option. So they use their instincts, their hunches. Um, Second thing that they might draw on in order to make decisions is experience. So if managers have made um, similar decisions in the past and they've seen how they've panned out, that might be very common for them to use their past experiences to help them inform their judgments about what decisions they're gonna make this time. Third approach is known as scientific decision-making. Trying to inject some science, some data, something more quantifiable into the decision-making process. Now, there's numerous quantifiable business techniques that managers might use to help them in their scientific decision-making processes. One of those is known as decision trees. We're gonna try and launch straight into that today. So, here goes. What we have, uh, what we have behind us on the board here is a decision tree. Uh, can look a little bit daunting, especially the first time you're tackling them. Because it's one of our numeric topics, we know that it's got a good chance of being on the exam. Exam boards love these differentiators, these activities they know that not all students can tackle. Ten minutes here and we're going to nail this bad boy, okay? So we'll be able to make sure that we can do this in exams. So let's crack on. Decision trees always start with a square. And that square indicates that there is a decision that needs to be made. So let's have a look at this scenario. Imagine we've got ourselves um, a business, an organisation. Let's imagine it's one of, one of uh, the big electronic firms. Now, they've got a decision to make. They've decided to embark on a little bit of new product development. They're going to bring out something new, a, a new addition to their product portfolio. Trouble is, even though it's a big business, they're on a budget. Um, and they can either afford to bring out a new television set, believe it or not, that is a television set, or alternatively, they can afford to invest a little bit more and bring out a new mobile telephone. But because of budgetary constraints, they can't afford to do both, so they've got to make a decision. Now, they could make that decision based on hunches, could make that decision based on experience. What we're going to try and do is to inject some numbers, some data, some scientific uh, data into this decision-making process. So up here on the board, we've got two different pathways. Pathway number one says, look, Here's what could happen if this electronics manufacturer decides to go with the new television set. That's the, the decision that they make. And we can see that if they decide to go with that strategy and develop that new TV, it's going to come at a cost. Market research costs, research and development costs, or production costs. It's going to amount to £5 million. So if we go with the new TV set as our strategy, it's going to cost us £5 million. Here we've got a different pathway. Alternatively, this business might decide to launch the new mobile telephone. Now that's the more expensive option. If they do that, it's gonna cost the organization 10 million pounds. The fact that these numbers are in brackets indicates that this is a cost to the organization. This isn't money that each of these projects would make. These are the initial setup costs of uh, making each of those respective decisions. Now, as we move along the branches, of our decision tree here, we can see that we've got our first two options, the TV set or the mobile telephone. We should always remember that businesses have always got a third option in their back pocket. Whenever they're making decisions, there's always the option to, to go with neither of those. Let's not launch the TV set, it's not the right time. Neither will we go with the mobile telephone. Instead, we're gonna do nothing. Now, Doing nothing, we can see, won't cost the firm any money, it doesn't require any investment, but neither will it return the business any funds either. So we'd only go with the do-nothing approach if it turned out that both of these options would end up costing the business more money than it might make. Possible, 
we'll have a look and see whether that is indeed the best option in a moment. So let's have a look along this top branch here. We've just said that if this business decides that it's going to invest in launching the new television set, it's going to incur a cost of £5 million. But it's going to make the business additional revenue as well. And what we have here, where we have this circle on our decision tree, the circle indicates that, OK, there's a decision to be made. And the circle indicates that if we make that decision, there's different possible outcomes that might occur. Now, if we decide to launch this television set, the business is predicting that there's two different possible outcomes that might occur. It might result in high sales. So they launch this new TV set, it goes incredibly well, it's incredibly popular, maybe it becomes one of the market leaders, and it results in high sales. However, that's not a definite. We can't guarantee that that will happen. There's a possibility that if we launch this new TV set, it might not be that competitive on the marketplace, and it might only generate low sales. Now, you can see that written underneath here, somebody inside the business, and you don't need to worry about doing this in your exam, this will be given to you, but if you were doing this inside a business, you would need some of your analysts, some of your data experts, to try and forecast, to try and predict what the likelihood is of each of these two outcomes occurring. What's the likelihood that if we launch this new TV set, it will result in high sales? What's the likelihood that it will be disappointing and only result in low sales? So up here, we've got two probabilities. And you can see the more likely outcome, according to the business, is that if we launch this new TV set, it will generate high sales. There's a 0.7 probability of that, or a 70% chance of that outcome occurring. There's a 0.3 probability that it will only result in low sales or a 30% chance. Now here's what we've got to do with our decision trees. You can see right along the end of our branches, we've also got how much money, how much revenue each of these possible outcomes might result in for the business. So we launch this new TV set, it results in high sales, it goes well, it's going to end up making the business £20 million. But if it does end up only making low sales, it will only make the business £10 million. So we've got a 0.7 probability, a 70% chance it's going to make us £20 million. But we've got to factor in there's a 0.3 probability that it's only going to make us £10 million. So what we can do is we can try and do some sums. We can try and do some calculations in order to try and work out whether this is going to be a project that's going to be worth investing in or not. So here's what we've got to do. For our exams, you might get asked to calculate something known as the expected monetary value. If we were to go with the television set as our new project, there's a 0.7 probability it will make us £20 million, but we've got to consider there's a 0.3 probability it will only make us £10 million. So what, on average, if we were to go with the new TV set and we were to make that decision over and over and over again, what, on average, would it make us? Sometimes it would make us £20 million, other times it might only make us £10 million, but what would it make us on average? Now, here's how we do that. To work out what's known as the expected value or the expected monetary value, the EMV, if you will, we're going to take our probabilities and we're going to times them, we're going to multiply them by how much revenue we would make if that outcome were to occur. So we're going to do 0.7 times £20 million and we're going to do 0.3 times 10 million pounds. What I'm going to do is going to calculate those two and then we're going to add them together. It's going to give us what's called the expected monetary value of deciding to launch this new television set. So here we go. If we do 0.7 times 20 million pounds, we'll find that the answer comes out at 14 million. 0.7 times 20 million comes out as 14 million. If we do the same for the low sales possibility, we do 0.3 times 10 million, then the answer is going to come out as 3 million.
pounds. Now, we could get asked to do this in the exam, work out what's called the expected monetary value here, the EMV. To do that, we multiply these probabilities by the possible outcomes, do it the same for the high and the low sales, and then we simply add the two scores together. 14 million plus 13 million means that if we launch this new TV, the expected monetary value is possibly 17 million pounds. Add the two together, 17 million pounds. Now, that's just for the TV. This business is also toying with the possibility of maybe launching this mobile phone instead. Um, it's gonna cost 10 million pounds if we do it, but what we can do is we can also work out the expected monetary value for this option as well. So remember what we're gonna do here. We're gonna multiply these probabilities and we've got a 0.5 probability that this time, if it results in high sales, it's gonna make us 30 million pounds. But we've also got to factor in that there's a 0.5 probability, a 50% chance that sales will actually be quite low if we launch this product. So we've got to look times 0.5 by the five million pounds it will make us if this project has quite disappointing and low sales. So let's do that right now. 0.5 times 30 million comes out at 15 million pounds. If we go with the low sales option, 0.5 times 5 million comes out at 2.5 million pounds. Remember what we're gonna to do to work out what's called the expected monetary value. We're doing it for the phone this time. We've got to add these two scores together. 15 million added to 2.5 million means that the phone has the expected monetary value of 17 and a half million squidlets. But we don't stop there because we've done some good work there. We've done some good data analysis there. We've got some probabilities. We've got some possible revenues. We've multiplied the two together. We've added the different outcomes together. We've got expected monetary values for both options. But we've missed something out. What we've missed out here is a consideration of how much each of these schemes might cost us if we were to make this decision. So the TV is the cheaper option. If we launch that, it's only gonna cost the firm five million pounds. The phone definitely has the greatest possible return, but it also costs twice as much. It costs 10 million pounds. When we factor in these costs, when we take these costs away from our expected monetary values, it leaves us with what's called the net gain of each potential decision. And working out the net gain, again, is something that you may get asked to do in your exams. So to work out the net gain, you need to take your expected monetary values, or just your, your expected values, and we're gonna deduct the cost from each of the expected monetary values, and it will leave us with the net gain. So for the TV up here, our expected monetary value was 17 million pounds. We deduct the five million pound cost. And if we go with this decision, our net gain will be 12 million pounds. The phone had the expected monetary value that was slightly higher, 17 and a half million pounds, but it also has the highest cost. You deduct the 10 million there from the 17.5 million expected monetary value, and it leaves you with a net gain of 7.5 million pounds. 17.5, take away 10, net gain of 7.5 million pounds. Now, what does this tell us? Well, first of all, it tells us that no matter whether we go with the decision to launch the new TV or the decision to launch the new phone, they are both options that are better than doing nothing. So we'll put a double strike through through doing nothing because we could go with either of these options and their net gains are profitable for the business. This will make us seven and a half million, this will make us 12 million. So they're both goers, they're both worth investing in. But remember, we go back to that initial thought we don't have the budgets to do both. So, according to our decision trees, we're gonna go with the decision that has the highest possible net gain. In this case, it's the television set. We have a net gain of, a net gain of 12 million pounds. 
that's the option we're going to go for. So we'll double strike through going for the phone because the net gain's low. It's only seven and a half million pounds. Now, so our decision trees have made a choice for us. Rather than using hunches, rather than using experience, we've let data do the decision making for us. Now, in a future tutorial, we'll have a look at the value of decision trees and there's some question marks about whether uh, all of the data that we put in them can be reliable and whether it might end us making a decision that potentially makes us miss out on the, the most lucrative possibility on our whole decision tree. But that's how we do it in the exam. We could get asked to work out the expected monetary value. We could certainly get asked to calculate the net gain. We can do both of those things now. It's worth doing a couple of practice activities. Um, but that will do us for today. See you next time.